The US Federal Reserve, which is the United States Central Bank, printed $3 trillion dollars alone in 2020 to tackle the COVID pandemic. And like the US Federal Reserve, central banks around the world have the authority to print any amount of money out of thin hair whenever they want. Hello guys, this is your boy Ali Salanki. I'm a blockchain come crypto developer and also a YouTuber and I am back today with a new video wherein I'll be talking about how crypto coins are released to the public. There are a few ways but in today's video we will be focusing on ICOs. I will tell you what ICOs are, the pros and cons of ICOs and how ICOs have later developed over time towards IDO and IEOs. So let's get started. As I told you in the beginning of this video, the central banks have the authority to manage money supply in the fiat currency system. Fiat money is nothing but money which the government has declared legal and its value is not backed by any physical commodity, but it is based on the trust of the people on the government. So whenever there is a crisis like the one happened in 2008, wherein millions of people had to suffer, central banks can print more and more money to liquidate the markets and help the economy. But Ali, if banks can print any amount of money, why don't they print a lot of money and and end poverty. That's not how it works. One of the main problems caused by printing unlimited money is inflation. Let me explain how with a sweet example. Suppose there are four boys. Boy A has 5 rupees, boy B has 15, boy C has 5 and boy D has 20. Now they all want a chocolate worth rupees 10. The shopkeeper has two chocolates only. Now, as you can see, only boy B and D can buy the chocolate as the other two have 5 rupees only and the chocolate is worth 10 rupees. But one day, government decided to give 10 rupees to everyone. Now, A has 15, B has 25, C has 15, D has 30. But now there are only two chocolates. The demand rose from two chocolates to four and supply, it remained the same. So the shopkeeper will raise the price of chocolates from 10 to 20 so that it can meet the demands. This is why banks will never print unlimited money to keep inflation under control. But there have been countries which made a total mess by printing a lot of money. The downside of freedom to print money is that if it is not managed in the right manner, it can cause a lot of problems like hyperinflation. It is a situation wherein prices rapidly increase. This has been happening in the country of Venezuela. This was all about how fiat currency system works. Now let us see how cryptocurrencies work. Cryptocurrencies are digital currencies and they cannot be printed and given out to the public. One of the ways to release cryptocurrencies to the common public is ICOs, which is short for Initial Coin Offering. Just like IPOs happen in the stock market, whenever stocks are open for the public to buy for the first time. Similarly, in ICOs, the coins are available for the first time ever to be released to the public. Ethereum, which is the second most popular cryptocurrency in terms of market cap, was released in an ICO and its founders raised $2.2 million worth of Bitcoins from this ICO. Binance Coin was also released in an ICO and during its time, ICO founders managed to raise $15 million. But why ICOs? Why do founders raise millions of dollars and also why do people buy their coins? ICOs are mainly launched to raise money for the project the founders are working on. Like Binance wanted to raise money so that they can build their exchange better, market their products and so on. Ethereum wanted to raise money to build a decentralized internet. You can find what a project wants to do with the money they will raise by reading their white paper. To answer the second question, why would people pay money? I would like to say that if people believe in the project and think that it has potential to disrupt the traditional industries and it really does match up the expectations of investors, the value of token they bought can increase giving them huge profits. And in case of Ethereum and Binance coin, it really did pay off. But sometimes it doesn't. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of ICOs. Let's start with the pros. ICO is a crowdfunding method and it has given entrepreneurs the power to raise money easily without too much hassle and documentation. 
All you have to do is create a token, a white paper of the project you want to work on and release it to the public. Only entrepreneurs can understand the hard work it takes to raise funds. However, there is a downside and it is that anyone can create their own coin since it is open for all in the market and fraudsters can make a false white paper to raise funds and it has happened in the past that the promoters of the project have made false promises and after raising the money, they just ran away with people's money. But there have been updates in the crypto community to stop such scams and different ways to raise money have been developed. These are called IDOs and IEOs. IEO, which is short for Initial Exchange Offering, is nothing but an ICO launched through a crypto exchange. The founders approach the centralized exchange so that they can launch their own token and then the process of ICO is carried out on these exchanges. So instead of carrying out an ICO in an open, unregulated market, it is carried out on a crypto exchange. On the other hand, IDO, which is short for Initial Decentralized Exchange Offering, is the process of raising money which is carried out through a decentralized permissionless platform. There is actually no major difference between an IDO or an IEO. It is just that in an IEO, you have to carry out the fundraising on a centralized exchange. Whereas in IDO, you have to carry it out through a decentralized permissionless platform. That was all about ICOs, IDOs, IEOs. Let me know in the comment section below if you've ever invested through this route. But now let us take a look at how all of these are different from one another. In ICO, the fundraising takes place through the website of the token issuer. In IDO, the fundraising takes place on a permissionless, decentralized platform. In IEO, the process of fundraising takes place through a centralized exchange. In an ICO, the entire process of fundraising is managed by the company who is issuing the tokens. IDOs are no different here as well. The company themselves have to manage the process. In IEO, however, the developers have a relief here as the crypto exchange bears the responsibility of managing the process. Now let's talk about the marketing cost. In ICO, the marketing costs are significantly high because marketing an ICO is just as marketing a new project and you have to spread out the word, win people's trust and convert it into sales. In IDOs, the costs are medium as the permissionless platform as well as the token issuer both market the token. In IEOs, the costs are significantly lower as exchanges actively market the tokens. Now let's talk about token listing. In ICO, the developers have to reach out to the exchanges to list their tokens. In an IDO, the token is listed immediately after the IDO ends. Whereas in an IEO, the token is listed on the same exchange where the IEO is conducted. So that was it about the difference between ICOs, IDOs and IEOs. Now a quick recap of what we discussed and learned today. We saw how traditional finance works and then we saw what are ICOs, their pros and cons and then we saw IDOs and IEOs and lastly we saw how ICOs, IDOs, IEOs are different from one another. I hope you guys got to learn more about ICOs, IDOs and IEOs. We hope you found this video informative and it added value to your crypto journey. Stay connected with DCX Learn and make sure you're liking and commenting on this video and helping us get better in front of the YouTube algorithm. Also, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that whenever we put out a new video, you're the first ones to know that. Stay connected with CoinDCX and DCX Learn on our social media handles.